Hey everyone, Michelle Razo with the Finding Yourself Book Club here. Very excited to bring you the very last chapter of Lindsay Gibson's Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents today. Um, I know I've been rushing to try and keep the chapters under 15 minutes. I hope I can do so today. If not, I will record one final session tomorrow um, or soon and, and uh, we'll be complete with this. I'm super excited about it. it. It really was a book that helped me in my life. Um, and I'm hoping in the future to do a series on her second book, which is, um, I have to pull it up, but I think it's called Recovering from Emotionally Immature People. So she, she broadens it out beyond parents. Um, so yeah, excited. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Please check out our site, www.findingyourselfsatx.com. You can fill out a life balance questionnaire there and the first consult is always free, all right? Chapter 10, <clears throat> how to identify emotionally mature people. The previous chapter explored how you can claim your emotional freedom by honoring your true self in your relationships with your parents and others, setting limits and acting on your own behalf. In this chapter, you'll learn how to identify people who are emotionally mature enough to engage in a mutually satisfying relationship. I'll also discuss how you can adopt new attitudes about relationships so that you can interact in ways that will help pu put emotional loneliness firmly in your past. Unfortunately, adult children of emotionally immature parents can be skeptical that a relationship could enrich their life. Instead, they tend to think that re rewarding, re I can't speak tonight, rewarding relationships are a pipe dream, too good to be true. And beneath this thought, they typically fear that other people won't be truly interested in who they are. These negative expectations perpetuate emotional loneliness, but you can change them once you're aware of them. The lure of old patterns. Remember what John Bowlby said, all humans share the primitive instinct that familiarity means safety. Therefore, if you grew up with emotionally immature parents, you may feel subconsciously drawn to the familiarity of egocentric and exploitative people. Quite a few of my female clients who ended up in abusive relationships distinctly remember that in high school, nice boys didn't appeal to them. In fact, they typically found considerate males boring, which unfortunately meant that if the guy's behavior wasn't selfish or dominating enough, there was no attraction. For these women, self-centered males probably stirred up uncertainty in a way they found exciting. But was this actual excitement, or was it a shiver of childhood anxiety in response to a self-involved person who wanted to use them. Recognizing emotionally mature people. The sections that follow offer some guidelines that will help you recognize more emotionally mature people. Then, instead of unconsciously enacting old familiar patterns, you can consciously choose to connect with people who show the positive traits discussed below. Whether you're choosing someone to date, finding a new friend, or interviewing for a job, you can use the characteristics of emotional maturity in this chapter to identify people with long-term relationship potential, whether you start out face-to-face -face or online. Nobody's perfect, but good prospects should have enough of the following characteristics to make the relationship enriching rather than draining. They're realistic and reliable. Being realistic and reliable may sound humdrum, but nothing can take the place of this basic soundness. Think of the first cluster of traits as the physical layout of a house. It won't matter what color you paint the walls if the structure is awkward to live in. Good relationships should feel like a well-designed house, so easy to live in that you don't notice the architecture or planning that went into it. They work with reality rather than fighting it. They can feel and think at the same time. Their consistency makes them reliable. 
They don't take everything personally. They're respectful and reciprocal. Emotionally mature people treat other people as individuals worthy of respect and fairness. All of the following traits reveal their cooperative orientation, which will come out in how they treat you. You'll have the feeling they're looking out for you rather than being solely focused on their own best interests. You might think of these traits as being like the elements of a house's infrastructure, such as heating and plumbing, that are essential to making it habitable. They respect your boundaries. Emotionally mature people are innately courteous because they naturally honor boundaries. They're looking for connection and closeness, not intrusion. For emotionally immature people, on the other hand, getting close to someone often leads to taking the person for granted. They seem to think that closeness means manners don't matter. They give back. Fairness and reciprocity are at the heart of good relationships. Emotionally mature people don't like taking advantage of people, nor do they like the feeling of being used. They want to help and are generous with their time, but they also ask for attention and assistance when they need it. They're willing to give more than they get back for a while, but they won't let an imbalance go on indefinitely. They are flexible and compromise well. Emotionally mature people are usually flexible and try to be fair and objective. An important trait to keep an eye on is how others respond if you have to change your plans. Can they distinguish between personal rejection and something unexpected coming up? Are they able to let you know they're disappointed without holding it against you? If you unavoidably have to let them down, emotionally mature people generally will give you the benefit of the doubt especially if you're empathetic and suggest trade-offs or compromises to ease their disappointment. They're even-tempered. The sooner the temper shows up in a relationship, the worse the implications. Most people are on their best behavior early in a relationship. So be wary of people who display irritability early on. It can indicate both brittleness and a sense of entitlement, not to mention disrespect. People who have a short fuse and expect that life should go according to their wishes don't make for good company. If you find yourself reflexively stepping in to soothe someone's anger, watch out. They are willing to be influenced. Emotionally mature people have a secure sense of self. They don't feel threatened when other people see things differently, nor are they afraid of seeming weak if they don't know something. So when you have an insight to share with them, they listen and consider what you tell them. They may not agree, but thanks to their natural curiosity, they'll try to understand your point of view. John Gottman, well known for his research into relationships and marital stability, describes this trait as a willingness to be influenced by others and counts it among his seven principles for a successful, sorry, for a sustainable, happy relationship. Now I'll tell you, I fell in love a little bit more with Lindsay Gibson when she mentioned John Gottman, because I'm a huge fan of Gottman. Emotionally mature people are truthful. They apologize and make amends. They're responsive. One of the basic traits outlined above, once all the basic traits outlined above are in place, you'll also want to seek out people with qualities that give relationships a sense of warmth and fun. Think of the following traits as essential to a, sorry, <laughs> tonight is bad for me, I'm sorry. Think of the following traits as essential to a fully rewarding relationship experience, just as paint and furnishings are essential to make a house a home. Their empathy makes you feel safe. They make you feel seen and understood. What a gift it is to talk with someone who's interested in your inner experience. Instead of feeling strange for having certain feelings, you feel understood because the other person resonates with what you're talking about on an emotional level. They like to comfort and be comforted. They reflect on their actions and try to change. They can laugh and be playful. They're enjoyable to be around. What to look for in meeting people online. 
The characteristics described in this chapter are also applicable to online dating and social networking. In fact, <clears throat> in fact, online contacts offer a great opportunity to practice identifying emotional maturity as you read and consider what people are revealing about themselves in their profiles and electronic messages. Although some people are better writers than others, all personal writing reveals something about how people think, what they value, and what they're most focused on, not to mention their sense of humor and sensitivity to other people's feelings. Plus, reading what people have written gives you time to notice how their messages make you feel. Initial phone calls also give you room to observe and note what the other person is saying while keeping your facial expressions and nonverbal reactions private. In these venues, ask yourself how you feel about people's timing and pacing. Are they respectful of your boundaries and how fast or slow you want to go in getting to know each other? Do you feel pressure for instant intimacy or do they take an uncomfortably long time to respond? Do you get the feeling they're pinning too many hopes on you before they even know you? Or are they being a little standoffish so that you have to work to keep the communication going? Are they reciprocal? Do they reference what you said in your previous email or immediately launch into their own topics? Do they keep a conversation going by asking questions to get to know you better or find out your thoughts on a certain topic? Do you find it easy to schedule things with them? Or are the two of you frequently out of sync? After reading a profile, email, or message, take a moment to jot down your impressions. This kind of reflection will help you learn to focus your attention on your gut reactions, which will be easier because you won't have the social pressure of a face-to-face -face interaction. Describe how you feel inside after reading what the person wrote. Will you feel comfortable being yourself? Or will you feel like you have to watch what you say and how you say it? Observing your reactions is a crucial skill for identifying emotionally mature people and online communication can give you excellent practice in doing just that. Okay, so I've got three minutes before my timer's up and she has here, um, it is like a, I'm trying to think of the best word for it. In one of her books, she talks about like a bill of rights, but this isn't a bill of rights. It's, she calls it an exercise and it's, so it's a profile, creating a profile of emotional maturity. Um, so this is on page 193. As I've said multiple times throughout these recording sessions, I, I hope that you pick up your own copy of the book and work through it, but it's like a list. So of the things that you should do to change how it is that you see yourself and what is okay and not okay. And I know I'm out of time. Um, so I just, I highly recommend that you go pick this up. Like I said, this has been a life-changing book and I'll read the summary to you. Um, and then we will, we will say goodbye to Lindsay Gibson for just a little bit until we pick up her next book. <laughs> summary. This chapter outlined common attributes of emotionally mature people so that you can recognize such people more easily. It also briefly summarized new ways of relating that can help you create more satisfying and supporting relationships with others. Now that you know what emotional maturity really looks like, you won't be tempted to settle for the next person who shows you some affection or offers you the bare minimum in a relationship You'll be able to look for what you want and be comfortable observing others until you find it. As you reflect on your emotional strengths and capacity for connection, you'll find that the keys to happier relationships have been within you all along. So this has been a great journey with you all. Um, please, please, please read through it. Call me if you want to talk about it. Um, we could do the exercises together. But, um, but yeah, this has been so life-changing for me. It really helped me. And I think I've read it, not including with you guys, I've read it maybe three times. So please uh, pick up your copy and we'll chat again soon on a new topic. So excited for that too.